water supplies in Hong Kong. Basically, well, every day when you are at home or in your office, when you turn on the tip, you don't have any shortage of water. In fact, it's difficult to promote interest to talk about the issues. Uh, the last opportunity that I had was last year, back in November, when we had a serious drop in Guangdong that even threatened the Dongjiang to supply water to Hong Kong. Mm. And then, well, uh, quite a big sectors of the community became concerned about the issues. Uh, and then, I hope they will last. But in fact, the interest died away very quickly. Uh, but I, I can assure you, uh, what the supplies department understands is not an issue that we can remain complacent. And we are quietly edging in and trying to well, uh, well, uh, ensure that concept of water conservation is well implanted in um, young generations. I will talk about that further in the slide. But uh, to provide uh, some basic information, Hong Kong is a very small place with a population of about uh, 7 million people. Hot, humid climate, uh, reasonably rainy, uh, but the consumption of water is high. Consumption of water is high. It's about uh, 0.9 billion cubic meters per year. Uh, we rely on support uh, the supply of a portable water, mainly from Dongjiang. It supplies 70 to 80 percent of the demand. A local reservoir provides 20 to 30 percent of the demand. And in fact, the agreement between Hong Kong and Dongjiang currently is for the supply of 0.8 billion, 0.8 billion billion cubic meters for Hong Kong every year. And in a way, to in order to ensure that we won't waste any precious water resources, each month by the middle of the month, we'll advise the Dongjiang counterpart as to, well, how much water should be transported in the next month. But we estimate the quantity we required based on the storage in the local reservoirs and based on the demand pattern. The ultimate supply that has been agreed with the Guangzhou government is that they will supply 1.1 billion cubic meters per year to Hong Kong. And basically, well, the, based on our estimations, we think uh, that supply demand would be able to support us well, until 2030 or even beyond. I understand well, the, uh, in civics exchange report, it mentioned about a gap, a possible gap. That is based on a project growth. And on the other hand, it's based on well, some of the measures that we have put in place. But I am sure that with the cooperation of the whole community, when we put in sufficient measures to conserve water, then we can actually cut down the demand. That's the situation of uh, the gather consumption. Well, Mike, I have actually used one of the slides from the report. It's very illustrative. In a way, you look at the position Hong Kong. It's actually actually over there, all right? We are amongst well, the, the one who use well, the largest volume of water or per capita basis. But of course the interesting thing you have to know is that uh, when you split the volume that are being used uh, by people in Hong Kong into portable water, so in blue, and flushing water, so in brown, which for Hong Kong most of them are sea water, all right? Most of, most of the flushing water is from sea. But uh, when you look at the quantity of that, uh, it's being used by people in Hong Kong is quite a high figures. We are using 90 liter per head per day flushing water. Right? So although it's not fresh water resources, but it's consuming energy. So that's why we actually have to think of a way of encouraging people to cut both the portable water consumption and also the seawater consumption for flushing. Uh, this is a year-by-year -year port of the consumption rate. You see there is a king over here, and it never come down again. Uh, remember back in 2003, 2003 we have SARS, all right? And then we actually promote a program on asking people to wash their hands more frequently, 
well, the wash, well, the whatever, or even lip sharp, or well, the lip buttons, or whatever. And then we end up with this kind of situation. All right? But not being changed for the toilet. In fact, people are saying that you flush the toilet, you better cover it up. Otherwise, you're actually uh, spreading all the germs around. But that is increasing. Because actually, we don't charge anything from flushing water. All right? And probably, I think people now uh, well, think a toilet is as convenient as a basket. A basket in the toilet, a uh, bathroom, you have to well, clear it every day. But then for a toilet, it's just a push of button. So there must be something that we have to discourage. All right, I mentioned that the department would uh, remain alert and not be complacent. Uh, but well, basically, when you look at the situation, well, after 1982, there's never been any water rationing, no restriction on use of water, 24 hour days, seven days a week, and 36, 35 days also. So all year round, basically. In fact, well, the, we are heavily rely on the supply from the Dongjiang, and uh, the first agreement was in fact uh, back in 1960, when we deliver some the quantity of water from the Songjun Reservoir, and the agreement is not one. Well, uh, well, I think that is uh, haven't got any end date. In fact, the current agreement was signed back in 2008. And the end day is the end of 2011, earlier than 2015, especially in Mike uh, fires. All right, uh, but uh, it's basically quite a secure arrangement in a way. Uh, uh, basically, because well, the, we every time we talk, we're actually talking about uh, the cost, and the cost there is a formulation. The formulation, uh, well, the, that is based upon is the operating cost that we affect well the uh, currency exchange rate of uh, yenminbi the rand and also the hong kong dollars and also the uh, consumer price index fluctuation between the two sides so basically it's a well established establishment a mechanism for us to continue with the talk and uh, it's a difficult one but uh, it's basically kind of a guarantee well, arrangement so I think Hong Kong is uh, in a much better position than Singapore. Singapore well, the, get their water supply mainly from Malaysia, right? And with that particular threat, Singapore has raised water into a national security issues. So they have actually, under that threat, generated quite a lot of new technologies. 